in this video we will talk about Apple Intelligence. We will quickly go through the features and announce related intelligence. Then we will look at the Apple Intelligence architecture and how the whole thing has been put together. Next we would look into the two new foundation models that have been trained by Apple. And then we will look into Apple's new private cloud compute and the new OS developed by Apple. But before all that we need to look into something really important. We are bringing calculator to iPad. Yay! Now let's look into the Apple intelligence features. As part of the Apple intelligence, Apple will now include an image diffusion model to their supported devices. Using the diffusion model, customers can now create custom emojis on their devices. And this new feature is called Genmoji. So we're introducing Genmoji. Just provide a description and you'll see your Genmoji appear right before your eyes, along with more options to choose from. And I believe using the same diffusion model, Apple's allow you to generate images and they have a new dedicated app for it. It's called Image Playground. This is a new way to create playful images in just seconds. To get started, you can choose from a range of concepts like themes, costumes, accessories, places, and more. No need to engineer the perfect prompt. In a few seconds, you'll see Apple Intelligence creates a preview of what your image could look like. And as part of the Apple Intelligence, Apple is also including a 3 billion large language model that is trained by Apple themselves. Utilizing the on-device LLM, Apple is introducing features like priority notifications and features like proofreading, rewrite for your text to be more friendly, professional and concise or to or to summarize your text. The LLM also allows to write smart replies to emails. And now in mail, you get the summary of the email instead of a few lines of the email. And the LLM also allows it to prioritize your email because it can understand your email. The next interesting feature that was introduced is called Semantic Index. An on-device semantic index that can organize and surface information from across your apps. When you make a request, Apple Intelligence uses its semantic index to identify the relevant personal data and feeds it to the generative model so they have the personal context to best assist you. Semantic index is essentially the same as Microsoft's recall feature, where it monitors everything on your device and saves it to a vector database. Uh, the next feature that was introduced is called App Intents. It's essentially function calling for apps and is available for other apps to utilize. I was wondering why they did not use the shortcuts feature to do intents, but I guess shortcut does not define or describe what it's supposed to be doing, whereas intents defines it in plain English. App Intents is a framework that lets you define a set of actions for Siri, shortcuts, and other system experiences. We're starting with support for these domains, and over time, we'll add even more. And if you have an app that fits in an existing SiriKit domain, it can also benefit from Siri's enhanced conversational capabilities. And now Siri has been enhanced finally, and I'm guessing using the on-device LLM. So now when you ask Siri a question, Siri can understand what you're looking on screen. And not just only that, it, it knows the intents available on the app and the semantic index as well, which allows Siri to do things like... For example, say a friend texts you his new address. Right from the messages thread, you can say, add this address to his contact card and Siri will take care of it. Another example Or for is times this. when you're filling out a form and need to input your driver's license, Siri will be able to find a photo of your license, extract your ID number, and type it into the form for you. So now let's look into how the different parts has been put together to get it to work. Apple Intelligence starts with their on-device foundation model, a highly capable large language model. The first technique we use is fine tuning. This process results in a set of distinct models. A more efficient approach to fine tuning leverages a new technique called adapters. Adapters are small collection of model weights that are overlaid onto the common base foundation model. So essentially they have different LoRa's fine tuned for each of the different tasks that they need. They just swap the different adapter based on the task needed. We also applied a similar process for a diffusion model that generates images using adapters for different styles in Genmoji. So here is the, an overview of Apple intelligence. So when you're using your phone or device, it's all being monitored and stored in the semantic index. But also each app exposes a list of intents or as you may know, function calls then can be used by the LLM to trigger a specific function in your app. The only part that I don't think has been explained is how the orchestration ha is done on how the app decides which request to send to the server and which to do on device. And on this chart, the server models that we're looking at, these are all Apple models. These are not open AI. These are large language models running on the server that Apple has trained themselves that we will discuss shortly. So I believe for the following demo that I'm about to play, it is planned by the LLM running on the Apple server. And not just only that, I think the server might also be able to request contents from the semantic index. Imagine that I'm planning to pick my mom up from the airport and I'm trying to figure out my timing. 
Siri is gonna be able to help me do this so easily. Siri, when is my mom's flight landing? What's awesome is that Siri actually cross-references flight details that my mom shared with me by email with real-time flight tracking to give me her up-to-date arrival time. So now let's look into the detail of the language models that have been trained by Apple. So as per their blog, they have trained a roughly 3 billion parameter model that runs on device and a large server-based language model available with private cloud compute running on Apple Silicon servers. So the foundation models have been trained using Apple's AX LAN framework. It builds on top of JAX and uh, XLA. Uh, they say they've trained their foundation models on licensed data, including data selected to enhance specific features, as well as publicly available data collected by our web crawler AppleBot. Uh, there is a small power about how they've removed private data and other profanity, like filter the data, so it's high quality. And they're saying that they have developed two new methods for post training. The first one is a rejection sampling fine tune algorithm with teacher committee. I'm guessing this is simply a model that rejects a low quality answer. And the second one is RLHF with mirror descent policy optimization and a leave one out advantage estimator. I don't know what that is. So the on device model uses a vocabulary size of 49k, whereas the server has a 100k vocabulary size. I believe the on device model is a 4 bit quantized version. Uh, they say they use, for inference, they use low bit palletization. I'm not sure what that is, but it helps with memory power and performance uh what the, the next part is quite interesting this they also say that they have developed a method where they develop lower adopters that runs two bits in and four bits so on average you get 3.5 bits per weight which is weird it achieves the same accuracy as uncompressed models so it, they say on iphone 15 pro they are able to achieve time to first token of about 0.6 milliseconds per prompt token so for a prompt of 1k it is uh, it is 600 milliseconds to the first token and the generation rate is 30 tokens per second which is quite high and as discussed earlier for different tasks that needs to be done on device they have fine-tuned different adapters and they can switch them on the fly so they have provided a graph for their 3 billion model with an adapter comparing to phi 3 mini using human satisfaction score so for email satisfaction good result ra ra ratio Apple on device plus adapter is 87, whereas Fi 3 mini is 73. For notification, it is 79 for Apple, 3 billion, and 76 for Fi 3 mini. So they have compared their models against other models using these methods like brainstorming, classification, closed QA, coding extraction. And they are saying that on the above benchmark, that their 3 billion parameter model outperforms large models, including by 3 mini, Mistral 7B and Gemma 7B, which is very impressive. And their server model is slightly better than DBRX Instruct, Mistral 8x22 and GPT 3.5 Turbo while being highly efficient. So their 3 billion only loses 16% of the time against Gemma 2B, 30% against Mistral 7B and 32% percent of the time against phi 3 mini and 30 percent against gem 7b their server model loses 20 percent of the time against dvrx instruct 25 percent against gpt 3.5 turbo 27 percent of the time against mixtral 8x22 and 41 percent of the time against gpt4 turbo they've also tested their models using adversarial prompts and they have they are showing that they have the best result for both on device and server for harm, harmful output there is quite a big gap like from 8 percent to 13 percent six to 15 percent i hope it's not at the expense of rejecting valid prompts as well and they also show that their models when evaluated for human preference the safety is quite good as well the next they compare how good their model is in following instructions so 78 percent of the time for instruction level accuracy and 70 percent of the time for prompt level for their own device whereas uh, the server the only thing that beats them in, in instruction following is gpt4 turbo and uh, in both cases yeah prompt level or instruction level next they show their own device summarization is better than all these model and composition is better than all those models as well and server summarization is better than everything including gpt4 turbo whereas composition gpt4 turbo is better so it seems like that their 3 billion model is quite quite competitive and their server model is better than chat gpt 3.5 turbo but not as good as gpt4 turbo what is still not clear which prompts go to apple servers and at which point chat gpt is recommended i'm guessing that for any prompts that they are sure that their server can handle they send it to the server but for anything else they recommend chat gpt but eventually as their server models get Get better they will stop recommending chat gpt less and less i'm just guessing it might not happen that way so now let's check private cloud compute 
they use to protect your data when using Apple server. So when designing their private cloud compute, these are the points that they were trying to go for. Stateless computation or personal user data. So it means that the personal user data is exclusively used for processing the user request and is not saved or is available to anybody, even Apple themselves. So the next point is enforceable guarantees. And they're saying that it means where it is possible to ensure guarantee privacy it is done so throughout the stack. The third one is no privileged runtime access. That means that even Apple staff that are on site and trying to resolve an outage do not have privileged interface to those machines. And also the system should not be designed such a way that it can load new software. The fourth point is no targetability. That means an attacker should not be able to single out a specific user without attempting a broad compromise of the entire PCC system. And this must hold true for attackers who can attempt physical attack. So if a single com node is compromised, it should not be allowed that a specific user be redirected to that node. And their sixth and final point is verifiable transparency. The security researchers need to be able to verify with a high degree of confidence that our privacy and security guarantees a private cloud compute must match our public promises. So to achieve the above points, they have created a custom built server hardware and also a new operating system, which is a subset of iOS and macOS. Now compare this to what Microsoft did. They just put all your data in a text file. Whereas Apple is designing a custom hardware and a new operating system to protect customer data. So using bits from iOS allows to use code signing and sandboxing. So they've built some extensions for the server that just allow deterministic small restricted set of operational metrics to SRE stuff and they use Swift on server to build a new machine learning stack just for hosting their own foundation model. So they provide an end-to-end -end encryption for use from user's device to validated PCC node. So to prevent from any tampering on the PCC node, all code that can be run on the node must be part of a trust cache that can that has been signed by Apple, approved for that that is specific PCC node and loaded by the secure on enclave such that it cannot be changed or amended at runtime. This ensures that just in time compilers cannot be created. So new can new New code cannot be created at runtime. Uh, the next point is saying that the, the secure enclave provides an enforceable guarantee that the key that are used to this decrypt request cannot be duplicated or extracted. And the secure enclave randomizes the data volumes encryption key on every reboot and does not persist these random keys, ensuring that the data written to data volume cannot be retained across reboot. So technically, the data is cryptographically erased on each restart. Also, the inference process deletes the user data on, upon each request completion. So they have not included any remote shell or interactive debugging features on the PCC node. Also, there is no gen general purpose logging mechanism on the machine. There is only pre-specified pre structure and audited logs that come out. So this paragraph um, shares the method they use to search that if somebody who has physical access to the PCC nodes and even with the high level of sophistication should not be able to target a specific person or account. So when the PCC hardware is manufactured and delivered to Apple, they use high resolution imaging of the components nodes before, this, before it is activated. And they they perform extensive revalidation before the server is allowed to be switched on. And the process involved multiple Apple teams that cross check data from independent sources and the process further monitored by a third party observer not affiliated with Apple. And then a certificate is issued for keys rooted in the secure enclave UID for each PCC node. So the metadata that identifies a request a specific user is available to the load balancer and stuff, but not to the PCC node. The metadata is only part of the user request that is available to load balancer and data center components running outside the PCC trust boundary. Each PCC request go through OHTTP relay operated by third party which hides the device's source IP address before the request ever reaches the PCC infrastructure. So for the point of being transparent, they're making software images of e every production build of PCC public of publicly available for security research. User devices will ensure that they are communicating only with PCC nodes running authorized and verifiable software images. Every production private cloud computer software image will be published for a public or independent binary inspection including the OS application, all relevant executables, which researchers can verify against the measurements in the transparency log. To help the researcher, they will be releasing virtual research environments and also periodically be publishing subset of the security critical PCC source code. Apple has also developed a code language model for specifically for Xcode to help with code completion. We've created specialized coding models that capture expertise only Apple can provide. Code completion with an innovative new engine that can predict the code you need. 
The engine is powered by a unique model, specifically trained for Swift and Apple SDKs. And it runs locally on your Mac. Let's take a look. I'm working on an app that features fun videos from around the world. Next on my to-do list is adding code to represent a collection of videos. I want a name for the collection. As soon as I start typing, I get a great suggestion. I'll press tab to accept that. I also want a property to hold an array of videos. Again, Xcode finishes the line using a type from my own project. The code model actually inserted a type from their own project, which I don't, I'm not sure if it's available in GitHub Copilot. I don't think it is. So it seems to be quite advanced though. Uh, so that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, uh, please consider liking and subscribing. It'll help my channel. Thank you.